making things for Christmas is uh, not just the fact that we're all cheap. And we're going to keep telling ourselves that because it makes us feel better. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from three countries, two continents, and featuring five guys separated only by the same language. Here's your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is, wherever you're listening. As always, I'm joined tonight by Mr. Chris Cute. Hello, how are you? And Mr. Joe Whitaker. You're right, Tom, yeah. The woodworking junkie himself, Mr. Alan Robinson. How are you, fellas? And the rather nutty, and Mr. Jamie Page. How are you going? <laughs> um, not too bad. I hope you're all well. Uh, let's kick off with our normal shout outs from the various platforms. Uh, slightly shorter list than last week, thankfully. But a big thank you to Sarah Connor over on Facebook. Sterling, he sent a reply, um, sending us back some love from our, um, our comments last week. Steve French, the Wilkie Woodshop, KSFWG, Jim Dockrell, Know What Mum Wants, Matt Brander, Ian Hay and Bob Rawson from Plustrum Crafts and then on SoundCloud who's becoming a good friend and regular commenter of course Azalee so big hi to him. If you want to comment on these platforms then it's great when you get in touch and we like reading those comments as well so um, should we just go straight into the main topic this let's just swap it around a little bit this time we'll go straight into the main topic Christmas is coming um, are any of you guys doing anything maker wise for for Christmas this year or are you just going to go down to the shop and buy stuff I pretty much make my Christmas presents every year uh, to the point to them to to the extent that I can um, you know when my son was younger I mean I can't make a, an Xbox so you know I would have to go out and buy that but I mean as much as I possibly can I, I make my Christmas presents for everybody every year is that because it's the the love and feeling that you get from making it or are you just tight Chris i'll go with love and feeling but the latter may be right (laughs) so no my my, um i I totally get that actually from kind of from both points um a couple of years ago my my other half self-employed i'm self-employed christmas sometimes can be a real lottery in terms of you know what presents you get and a few years ago it was it for both of us it was fairly tight around christmas and we just decided to do handmade christmas so um everyone that i both of us knew just got stuff that we'd made ourselves and you know what i think we got the best presents given to us and gave the best presents for many years so I, i'm kind of big into that but uh, what what are you making this year then chris or can you even tell us do these people listen I mean, I don't know anyone that listens to the uh, podcast. Actually, I, actually, my mother-in-law does listen, so I, I can't let you know uh, on uh, on the air. I can tell you off the air, but uh, uh, let's just say this year, uh, my list of people that I had to make things for increased because not only uh, did I have to do it for my side of the family, my wife's side of the family, but my wife decided she wanted her entire office to have presents this year too. And so, uh, yeah, I went from last year. Oh, uh, yeah, no, where's, what's up with that? I went from making, <laughs> making things. Like uh, I made like a dozen of something last year for our immediate family, and then this year I made I had to make twenty eight of one thing for everybody. So yeah, it it, uh, it 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 got a little bit larger than it was last year. Larger, I think that's like out of control, isn't it? That's like more people than more people than I know. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, half the people I don't know. That's the problem. To sit there for, but she knows them and made her happy. So you know that's what I'm here on this planet for is to make her happy because. <laughs> she can make me that's all you're allowed to do <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that that's a, that's a lot of cutting boards chris oh <laughs> man no, Alan. <laughs> i would highly suggest you use walnut and maple for your end grains <laughs> <laughs> no uh every year every every year guys i i make one gift for each family in my family so i'll be making one gift for my mother-in-law's family one gift for my father-in-law's family and there's only one cutting board this year one in the whole year so that's awesome because i don't like making them either but uh i don't think anybody in my family listens to the podcast i'm pretty sure they don't they've never even mentioned it so i can name a few things i'm making one thing i think that is a, a really good thing to make that's a, it's quick and easy and it's really pretty is you, you guys ever see those uh 
bathroom tub shelves. I'm making like three of those this year. I guess it's kind of like making a cutting board because I am joining uh, three different kinds of wood together. But all you have to do is put one little bracer in there and you, you put it on top of your tub and you can slide it back and forth. We used to, I used to have one of those as a kid, like back in the early 80s. And I always used to bang my knees on it and knock all the soap and flannels into the water <laughs> and the... Uh... <laughs> I was thinking of uh, putting. I was, I was thinking of making like an a, an actual cup holder in it because I can imagine the wine drinkers that my family are will be drinking wine while using it, and I don't want them to spill that in the tub. So I'm trying to think of a way nice. I can make it kind of deep without uh, going all the way through the wood. I'm gonna need a really big, uh, not forstner bit. What do you call the hole saw bits? What do you call those? Well, like a spade bit, just a normal hole car. Yeah, but I don't want to go all the, all the way through the wood. Cause I don't know how big their wine glasses are or whatnot, but I'll, I think I'll just outline it with the whole cut, whole cutter, and then uh, use a router to take away the rest of the material. That should work fine. Make make like a um, if you had like a hole that was all the way through that just had a little slot in it, then you could put the wine glass through the slot. Does that make sense? So if you've got like a you know a circle, but then like a keyhole shape, but the yeah. keyhole was. External. I was you can thinking put the, that, like, the stem of the wine glass in. I guess they probably have a few different kinds of glasses. I'm sure that would work just fine. My first thought when I thought of that was some some of those wine glasses are those giant ones around, and the others are tall and thin. Or maybe that's a champagne glass, and I'm confused. Uh, I also thought maybe I can just put a hole straight through it, and then take another piece, the same size as the shelf itself, that's only like a sixteenth inch thick, and just layer it on the bottom itself. Just glue it on there. <laughs> Just make like a little hollow tray and they can put the entire bottle there. And then it's problem <laughs> yeah. solved. And most, of, most of my friends that drink wine drink oh. straight out of the bottle pretty much anyway. <laughs> Just add a straw. <laughs> Just include a straw, like Joe said. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you can make loads of discs and just glue them on top of each other. And then put one solid one at the bottom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because if you did it that way, you could do like a a hole mm -hmm. saw through the first one and then use a flush trim bit on the next one and glue it and then the next one and you wouldn't need a massive long route bit you'd only need it a bit more than the thickness of the timber that you're using you could you could go you know put for the entire bottle then couldn't you mm -hmm. you can get practicing on the scroll saw oh jamie <laughs> this, this, I mean, this would be a present for many hours 2020. <laughs> I thought you used to like him, Jamie. What are you doing with it? <laughs> I really like that idea. That, that's a really cool idea. That bath um, shelf thing. Great for your mother-in-law. Keep keep your mother-in-law happy, <laughs> and make her a bathroom <laughs> shelf. And drunk. <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I think with my, most of my family, I think it would be something wine-related. Actually, yeah. Maybe a wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Joe? Are you uh, are you doing any Christmas prezi stuff this year? Or well, this year I think I'm going to go against everything like that the maker community stands for. You're going to buy stuff, aren't you? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, I am because the position that I'm in, I literally I only get from my mom and dad, and I still live with my mom and dad. And these are the type of parents that whenever I'm making anything. The sticking the reds in the shed, what you're doing, what you're making, what's this, what's that, what's this, what's that. So I'd have no chance of making something and getting it passed on without them knowing what it is. So I'm really bound in that respect of not being able to make handmade gifts from. So it's literally Amazon, Black Friday, buy, 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 done. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> Honestly, Joe, I think uh, I'm so disappointed. Do you know what? I hope you get a bag of walnuts and a lump of coal for Christmas this year. With that actually, really. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty poor show. Traitor. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. You should make a decoy project. Make a half a project and keep it up on top of your workbench. And if they pop in, just say, I'm making this. But then if, if they pop in halfway through making a cut on the table saw, then I could lose fingers trying to quickly move it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> Here's what you could do. You could get on Amazon and buy a bolt for your workshop door. And then you just lock yourself in for an hour or two. <laughs> yeah, lock it from the inside, yeah. Problem solved. Okay, an on-air light. Say, say that you're vlogging or something like that, or you're on an interview. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that one. So now you have no excuses, so you're out of the community if you don't make something. <laughs> I'll be ready for next year. Yeah, but what, what would you make, though? Okay. What would you make if you, if you, you know, if you could? 
I don't know, my dad's my dad loves watching his football, that's his main thing, so I'd probably make some kind of, I don't know, a serving tray for like, like all the TV gear and stuff like that, probably. With nails in? Yeah, that's it, you've got to add a bit of an um, accent to it, but perhaps something like that, perhaps a, a caddy for all like your TV remotes and speaker remotes and stuff, stuff like that, so it's all tidy in the living room. There might be a coffee table to actually put it all in or something. That'd work. Mm. Could you, surely you could make something like that and then it wouldn't be like, yeah, oh, Joe's making us a TV remote holder for Christmas this year. Gah. They wouldn't know. I thought about doing like gift vouchers. So imagine like doing IOU one coffee table and then give that at Christmas and then from Christmas I make it. So they know that that's what they're going to get. But I haven't actually made it yet. That kind of idea. That's a cool idea because they can decide exactly what they want too. Yeah. But I always think that's kind of like cheaping out at the same time because it, it's not actually there and then done sort of thing. But same kind of idea, I suppose. But we'd be so much more proud of you, Joe, if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll, I'll cut all that out from what I said before and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> You're now back in the community. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Your other family accepts you. So what are you getting us for Christmas then? No. <laughs> yeah, do both, I want do both. Picture. No, yeah, get, that's a, get, I think I might do that. Get them something from Amazon and then do them a little bit. Because I know, you know, mums and dads always love stuff that we as kids make for them, don't they? They, they love all that. Yeah, make them a, a macaroni picture. Well, that's, I, I <laughs> think would. probably that's what Jamie will make, isn't it? Yeah, probably. I've got a lot of glitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's making his own What are you making? What, I'm, what am I making? Well, I've got a lot of pen blanks. Well, you've got a lot of nuts laying around your shop, too. You're always throwing <laughs> Yeah, not so much anymore. But, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, got a hell of a lot of pen blanks and pen kits lying around at the moment. I think everyone will probably be getting a pen. Yeah, you have um, about 50 of those, don't you? About 40, I think. But I had some anyway, so the problem is they're all they're all either blue or they're purple. So it's not like they're multicoloured. That's, that's not a good uh, scenario to be in. I don't know what to do with them at the moment. You're kind of in that situation because of your family, aren't you? So... Maybe yeah, you just, maybe you should maybe just I, get them get them maybe, whole. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should give them and shove them down their throat. Just give them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story behind that now, because a lot of people aren't going to know what we're talking about. I was approached by a family member about some pens. A price was agreed, and they went back and relayed the price, and it was everything was all agreed. So I went ahead and ordered the kits and everything needed to make these pens. And a couple of days afterwards, once the the kits have arrived and things like that, and everything was sat in front of me, I was then told they didn't want them. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go and hit my head against the wall. So, so they just cost you like 200 pounds is what you're saying? Yeah, basically. You could look at this as a, a kind of a good thing, though, if you actually make the pens. Really? <laughs> no, honestly, hear me out. You've, you've put out that money now. You've got your material sitting in front of you ready to go. You actually make those pens and you sell them for a profit. You could buy yourself a new tool, buy you the actual the pen kits that you actually want for yourself. So you never know, turn a, a negative into a positive. Yeah, I could get a ticket to Wolverhampton and go meet Joe. Give me a nice pen. Somebody queue up the brain side of life. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to have a real negative kind of vibe going and Joe just jumps in and gets all happy on us. We can't keep it negative all the way through. <laughs> I, I feel your pain there. I mean, I, I bought not that many, but probably maybe 12 pen kits. I think I got it in like a job lot off eBay at one point thinking, oh, I'll make a load of pens at some point. And then when I actually went to make a couple of pens, most of the inks had gone dry. A quick tip for uh, getting pens to undry, if you like, and it's just take a lighter and just heat up the, the little ball at the end, and that's just to get it flowing again. Yeah, yeah, you heat up the ball bearing at the very end of the pen, and it will uh, loosen up the uh, ink that's actually dried, that kept that's keeping the ball from moving, and that way you can use it again. It'll start flowing again. I didn't know that. I wish you'd told me that like a year ago. Yeah, just mess, mess with the ball, get it all flowing right. Oh, Joe. That had an undertone. If it didn't have an undertone, <laughs> it sounded like it had an undertone there. <laughs> there goes the family friendly. Oh, <laughs> you've watched my latest video, haven't you? Oh, Jesus. Well, Richard, what about you? What are you making? Or are you making again this year? Yeah, I'm making for people. Um, I didn't just give Joe a whole load of abuse and then basically be doing the same as buying oh i see how it is <laughs> no there'll, there'll be a bit of um a bit of both 
I'll make some for some people. There will be some chopping boards. There probably will be a couple of pens actually, because one of one of my nieces has just gone to teach training college this October. She's trained to be a teacher. So it'd be nice to give her a pen better than no- giving her nothing, I suppose. Slightly more distant family will probably get purchases of something or another. Yeah, there'll be a few makes in there. And I always make um, Kat something because I generally get a hat or a pair of socks knitted by her for me. We, oh, we nice. kind of always do a always do a make each other something, at least one thing anyway. Um, but what that actually is going to be at this point, I genuinely don't know. It could could be anything. But a few years ago, when I was still working full time for a company, I made some wooden reindeer. And I think if you look back on my Facebook page, right, the fan page thing rather than my own profile, there's a picture of a, dozens of them all stacked up on the, our old fireplace. And I, I, I was basically, it was when I bought my, my bandsaw, I was just playing around with it. And I saw somebody do a really, really intricate um reindeer from a a bit of four by two a, a show or something oh and yeah the, uh, yeah cuts the it out in about 15 seconds yeah the compound cutting yes um and yeah. i saw that and thought oh, i really want to do that on a bandsaw that can only take a quarter inch bandsaw blade <laughs> um, <laughs> that's weird point. Obviously, obviously i couldn't so but i what i actually did was um and I'm, I kind of managed to do it, not that in, quite that intricately, but I, I sort of simplified the design a bit and I made them out of much bigger timbers. I had some old rafters, which were about four by eight or four by six, um, which were pretty much the limit of the bandsaw. I had to, had to be quite careful because obviously the, the, bear, the, the guide bearings rub on the, the set of the teeth. So I had to mess around with the bearings for a long time, but I managed to get an eighth inch bandsaw blade in my bandsaw and I made these, a couple of these reindeer, and I thought they looked pretty cool. And I stuck them on my desk at work. And within about an hour of the day I put them in there, um, people were coming, oh, can you make me one? Can you make me one? Can you make me one? How much for those? And I was just like, well, I'll just make them out of these bits of old rafter that were kicking around. And one of my other colleagues was like, no, you seriously, you need to sell those. I was like, well, how much for? Because um, I, did, I didn't have a clue. It was like, it takes me two minutes on a bandsaw. It's worth nothing and they're like oh you should charge this and you should charge and i made an absolute killing i must have made like 50 and they were just all over the company on people's desks this one christmas and then the next christmas people were asking me to make them again so i um i might put a video out this year actually of making another one because i found a couple of these old blanks kicking around in my other workshop that you never see that the storage bin um so I might, I might do a video on that because it doesn't take long and we'll see. I think I want to get into uh, the reason why we, um, you know, except for Joe, because he's a traitor, uh, why we, uh, <laughs> the, the actual reason why we, uh, we, we, we make stuff. And I, th- there's probably a ton of reasons for everybody. And I guess it's probably each of us have our own personal ones. Like, and Joe, you could transpose this because like you probably make presents for people for their birthday. Uh, so, I mean, that, that it's the same kind of thing. My whole my whole deal about when I started, because I started making my Christmas presents every year, um, several years ago. Um, but I, I, be, I, I got this really bad taste in my mouth regarding Black Friday. I, I am, I am so anti Black Friday that you could mistake me for being Tim Sway if you looked at me real fast. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I really, man, it's just too much of a hassle. Half of the great deals that are out there are only available in a very limited supply. There's too many people in this store. It's just plain too commercialized for me. And so I, I keep trying to keep Christmas since I became that realization. I just had to keep Christmas or the holidays um, in my own way. And that, does, and that doesn't include a lot of commercialized hype. But it's really more of a, a one-on-one thing with the people who I'm making presents for. Now, granted... I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't make, I wish I could. I wish I had the time. I don't make one-off projects. I don't pick each individual person in my family and make something specifically for them. Um, I usually will come up with a general idea of something I think will be generally accepted by all, and then I batch those out. Um, And that's what they end up getting. Everybody gets the same thing. Um, And it's not my favorite way of making, but it's probably, you know what? You know what I did find, though? Repeatability, when you're batching things out like that, actually, in my case, it actually improves the quality as opposed to me doing one thing that I've never done before and then doing 28 
of another. By the time you get to that 28th one, the 28th one is a much nicer quality than the first one. So there's an offset to that. I don't really like to batch things out, but it actually does have a plus to it. I don't know about you guys. I mean, is, is there an underlying reason why? Is there a deep meaning to why, other than the fact that, you know, maybe we're just cheap? Or do you have another reason like that? Because mine is I'm just very anti-commercialism as far as it comes to Christmas. I don't really dig the whole stores and shopping and stuff like that. I think I'm kind of on the flip side of that in a sense. I do specifically pick a present for each person and make different things. If you guys go onto my YouTube channel and go into the playlist, I actually have a Christmas series from last year. Uh, I think I filmed about six of the presents I made, and each one of them were picked specifically for the person. I don't say in the video who for because I didn't want them to see it or I doubt they're even watching it anyway. But uh, like this year, I had overheard my mother-in-law say... She had pointed to a cast iron bench. It was more of a chair at her neighbor's house. And she was like, oh, I love that thing. I, I, it's too bad you can't make cast iron, Alan. And it was like some kind of weird joke. And I was like, oh, yeah. And, but then I saw a, a dingy old cast iron bench. And I thought of her immediately. And I went and I restored it for her. It's still sitting right, right to my left right now. Uh, so she'll be getting that. Oh, and my father-in-law, I, I mean, the man loves his beer. So I'm going to make him a beer caddy. <laughs> so uh, it, it's all specific to them i don't it's nothing to do with commercialism but the reason i started it in the first place my very first thought the first time i wanted to do it was financial i basically because i was cheap it was a lot cheaper for me to make it than to go out and to buy it but the overall feeling from that is far far better because i get to watch them enjoy something i made for them that was basically your reason for getting into woodworking as well wasn't it exactly yes and which end up costing you more in the long run oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like plans <laughs> I'm going to get into woodworking because I can make this on my own and save money. And then after all the table saws and all the knickknacks, it's like, oh, boy, that garbage can cost me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would anybody pay $100 or pounds for anything when you can make it for 10 times the price over the course of a year anyway? <laughs> just, you know. Well played, Amy. <laughs> this is not Dungeons and Dragons. This is a podcast. I'll do the same as Alan. Whenever I, I do actually make gifts and I don't just buy them off Amazon or wherever. I actually like pick a, an individual gift for that particular person. I don't. I've never actually batched anything out before, so I've never gone through that process. But I'm, I'm more about the the thought that goes into the gift itself, because something say as simple as a wooden box. If you went and brought a wooden box for somebody, yes, you've had the thought of they might like this box. I'll go and buy it. I'll give it as a gift. But you put in the time and effort in to make that box and to give it as a gift I think it means that much more to the person receiving it knowing that you've put your time your effort your heart into that gift itself it doesn't really matter what the gift is it's just because you've made it I agree and, and the people getting it you know with, with them being different things Joe I mean and it shows that you are actually thinking of them when you made it so that is the downside to batching things out I mean it just but it's a little, it takes a little more time to do it for individuals that's all yeah. It's like you're making a ton, though, Chris. <laughs> you kind of have to batch that many out. Yeah, the thought's still in it with batching it out. The thought is definitely still there with batching it out. I just mean, like, um, that I've never done it personally. But, yeah, um, if you decide that you're going to make uh, 100 cutting boards, then it's the case of everybody who receives that cutting oh, board. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Joe? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Anybody who receives one of those cutting boards, you've spent the same amount of time on every single one. You've chose to do it. You didn't have to do it. Your hands weren't tied. You've chose to do it out of your kindness and the love of your heart. So it, it, I think that's what make them, makes them special. Not only the you know the thought that goes into it, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily anti-profiteering you know I, i'm a business and i obviously want to make a profit just like all the high street shops are businesses and they want to make profits but how many times have you been rushing around the day before christmas trying to get that present for somebody and you go oh um uh, oh, they like reading oh, i'll get them a book and you just get a book off the shelf and no thought goes into it it's just done because it's the pressure of I've got to get a present for this person. And if I don't get a present for this person, everyone's going to hate me for the rest of the year. Whereas when you make it yourself, just like Joe said, you know, there is that thought and, and the time that goes into it. Not to mention, actually, chances are you probably spend a good amount of money buying the materials and everything that needs to go to make whatever it is as well. So not only do you actually end up spending the money somewhere, 
but you also then take up a good few hours doing that, you know, whatever that present is. And my, as you, you guys probably know, but maybe some of the listeners don't, my other half, Kat, she is a huge knitter and crocheter. She's a total yarn snob. Um, and her mum knits <laughs> and crochets. And she's also, she also makes she's a quilting as well. When you think of just a pair of socks, just the pair of socks that you're wearing at the moment, they come out of a factory and they're made, you know, 100,000 an hour. But when somebody has to sit there and knit that stitch by stitch by stitch for you, that they, they she's got this um, this phrase, you know, there's love in every single stitch, and she'll sit there for four, five, six hours over the course of two or three weeks. I mean, she started making Christmas presents back in September for people because she has to do them of an evening when she's not at work, she's sitting at home relaxing, and it takes up a huge amount of time and. It, when you think I'm wearing a pair of socks that somebody has made just for me and they've thought about all those little colours, and all, it just, it does mean so much more. And it annoys me when people look at a pair of socks and go, that's like three quid from Primark. You're like, no, it's not. It's, it's so much more than that. And, that. and that's what I don't like about the, the pressure from Christmas because a lot of people are under a lot of pressure at Christmas. Yeah. Um, whether they admit it, to themselves or anyone else there is a lot of pressure goes on and that's what i don't like because i don't go to the stores and i'm not under all that stress and you know have a list in my hands i've got all these people i have to buy for before i leave this mall today and, I, and that's where you end up picking up the book and scratching a name off and without really thinking christmas has become very much less stressful for me since i started doing this um because i don't have that kind of stress involved with what am i going to get so and so what am i going to get so and so i'm just like right i know what i'm going to get them because i'm gonna go out in my shop and i'm gonna make them and i'm gonna take a break from making it when i want to take a break from making it and then i'm gonna pick it up when i want to pick it up so it's a very uh stressless uh, atmosphere as opposed to the crazy running around bumping with each other waiting in a long line where's my credit card oh my god did i get anybody you know all that kind of craziness I, i'm not into that at all the last gift i bought under pressure was christmas eve what six or seven years back I realized I forgot to get my girlfriend something. I ended up coming home with a wedding ring. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's going to cost you. That is. <laughs> yeah, you pay for your mistakes. On the <laughs> and now, now I have some. Oh, wow. <laughs> what does she really want? She wants to get married. Oh, God. Okay, Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to this. Ow. I didn't know petrol station sold rings. <laughs> the, uh, the 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 best one of the best reactions I've ever gotten actually didn't come from a family member was um, uh, a couple of years ago I made a um, an oasis like portrait of Liam and Noel Gallagher and I've discovered that one of my mum's friends was uh, a massive massive fan like she's got lyrics like tattooed on her arms and things like that like, I live forever and etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, I turned around and gave her this like great big placard done on the scroll saw or portrait on the skull saw, and she just like opened it up, looked at it, and just lost control of her legs and just collapsed basically in my arms. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, the other advantage of having a other half or, you know, I guess family member for some people, being a maker is you're not only just able to make them something as a gift, but you could buy them some materials as well. If you want to go and buy something that they can then make themselves. A few years ago, I bought Kat a load of yarn. It meant nothing to me. I, I didn't even really know what I was buying. But it turned out the same year, she bought a little bowl blank of Purple Heart. And she didn't really know what she was buying either. She just bought this bit of purple wood because she liked the colour. And it was a kind of a perfect match. Could have gone badly wrong, I guess, from either point of view. But it, it just turned out really nicely. So I did like making with another maker. Another thing I did, this, this is actually going back couple of years ago as well, actually, I had some like f uh, four mil thick plywood. There was a few kids up and down the street, and uh, I just cut out a load of letters one summer of like, say, right, what's your initial, right? Okay, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Go and quickly cut that out and give it back to them. And I bought some, uh, you know, in like arts and crafts sets, you get like a, a set of like four different colours, like red, yellow, blue, and green or whatever. Yeah. I, bought, I yeah. bought a load of them off of eBay. So I said, right, there's a, there's a one of them pots of paints. There's your initial. Go and paint that. And uh, they'll sat next door and in their in their back garden because they've got uh, a young daughter. And uh, yeah, they just they'll just sat there painting painting their names. That's awesome. I did a similar thing a couple of years ago at the local primary school Christmas fair. 
it was like two weeks before Christmas. Um, and I don't know if anyone's ever done it. I, I think at that time, Steve Ramsey did a make snowflakes by when you tilt your blade over at 30 degrees and then you cut yeah, a load of cross cuts that. and you yeah. stick all together and then you bounce all the blades. I made, um, I made hundreds, I think. I've still got a bag of them upstairs um, of those. And then I took them all down to the local primary school with about four different colours of glitter and a pot of wood glue and the kids were making glittery snowflake Christmas decorations to then take home from the primary school fair to give to mum and dad. And that was, that was kind of cool. That's um, so funny. You guys who should bring this up because that's actually, you guys have just hit on what my, the, the video that's going to be out that I'm doing for tomorrow. Uh, because when I, that is so weird you guys brought that up uh, because actually the video is done as we, as we speak, it's done, it's edited. It's just scheduled to be released tomorrow evening. Um, when I, my son was here, and I know that uh, do, do do any of you have children that are of like four, five, six years of age yet, or are they all much younger than that? I got, I got both ways. I have a twelve year old, three year old, and a one year old. Okay, well, I, I only had one son. My, my wife and I only have one child. Um, but when he was four, five, six years old, and when I was getting into the uh, the whole making things for Christmas for other people, you know, my son was always wanted to be with dad, and he would, and I, and I but I wanted to take advantage of that and get him out into the shop because you know kids are um, you know it doesn't take much for mom. The easiest thing a mom and dad is ever going to do is get their kid excited for Christmas. So, <laughs> so yeah, if I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to take advantage of that and get my kid out in the shop with me. Um, and, and just going to make some simple, simple, simple projects. Uh, and that's what my video is about this week. I'm, I'm, I'm doing two simple decorations that you could that you could take a four, five, or six-year-old out of the shop with you and make a Christmas decoration. They can run upstairs and show it to mom or dad, whichever the case may be. You know, feel all proud that, hey, look what I made, and then hang it on the tree. But here's the kicker to that, guys. I was taking my Christmas stuff out of the attic and um, pulling thing decorations out. And I came across the decorations that I was out in my shop with, with my son when he was four, five, and six years old that he had made. And I'm telling you, that made me smile from ear to ear. I was like, that would be awesome. I, I remember when he and I did that, when he was just, and I'm telling you, that's kind of the whole gen, that's the genre of my next video that I have coming out because it is about involving kids and it's in the easy time of year to do it too. So if you have the opportunity and you have kids of that age, get them out in the shop with you and make some super simple. I mean, they look like they're made by four five and six, six year olds because they should be, you know, there's, it's simple stuff, but that, that's, uh, that's my next video that's coming out. That's what I have coming out tomorrow night. Some of my Just stuff wait. now looks like it's made by four or five year olds. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff I make today looks like that too, Jamie. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you ought, you ought to put a refinish on those and send them out to your son. Oh no, no, no. He's he's twenty one years old. No, I'm not giving it when he's thirty five, maybe I'll do that. But today they would probably go to beer money. Like, who wants to buy this? <laughs> Handmade. I, I I totally get that, Chris, but um I mean my my little and she's eight. Um and when she's over here, she loves to basically watch the CNC machine running. She'll like make patterns on the computer and she'll press go and she'll love to then get bored two minutes in and then come back in an hour when it's all finished. But she loves to get on the lathe and she has actually turned a couple of pens. And, and like you say, yeah, they look like they've been turned by six, seven, eight year old. Right. But that's not the point. It, it, it doesn't matter at a who, what at it looks like. At all. It doesn't matter at all. Um, and I think, I think she took one home with her and used it at home. Um, and she certainly gave her mum one that she made for Christmas as well. When an eight-year-old or a seven-year-old or whatever age kid, or an adult, but even more a kid, when they can go and say, I made this for you for Chris or for, for any day of the year, that is absolutely priceless. And, and, you know, you don't need Christmas to make that happen. But yeah, everyone's no. happy at Christmas. It's no. just easy. Love that. We was uh, I was sitting in the front room with my uh, with my niece yesterday, and um, she was here and she had she had bought a few presents for one of her friends for her birthday, and I just randomly out of the blues just turned around and said, "You should have made your friend something for her birthday," and she turned around and said to me, "Well, we've got time then," and I was like, "Yeah, all right. What do you want to go and make?" And she went, "Oh, let's go and make her a pen." And I was like, "Okay, come on in." And she she done the whole process. I said I glued the tubes in for her, but the whole turning process she done her in, her herself. 
So she turned herself a nice Paduke pen. She was quite impressed with that. Just on the pen front, mate, I mean, I, I don't make a lot of pens. And the, really for that, there's two reasons. One is the just the backache, shall we say, of making all those steps up to actually turning. But also, whenever I drill them out, they never yeah. seem to actually... I mean, I've got a half-decent pillar drill, but to actually drill the hole through the centre and get it to come out the centre on the other side and actually get it a decent hole. Yeah. Have you got any tips on that? I've got two tips. First one, watch Chris Coote's video on how on the 90-degree holder of the blank, because yeah. that's where I got my idea from. Um, secondly, is you can hold the, the pen blank in the chuck and get a Jacob's chuck and drill... The tail stop Go straight through it. That yeah, so um, there's a couple of ways. I, I haven't got but, small but, enough but, jaws, but yeah, Chris made that. a uh, Chris made a good little handmade like 90 degree device that holds the pen blanks for your drill press. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 actually, I, and I've used it, and it's, it's a good little device. Actually, Jamie improved upon my uh, my design because I did mine with. Um, you know, I, I, I put the square, a little smaller square than what the blank normally is so that when you grab the handle, you can squeeze it tight and then hold it on the drill press as you drill down through the middle of the chuck. And I, I used like uh, bolts and wing nuts uh, to tighten it down into place. And Jamie just put a hinge on the end of his, which actually makes a lot more sense. It would be a lot easier to make it that way. But if you have a chance, to check it out, Richard, because there's a lot of easy ways to do that. Um, I definitely, I mean, I've got, I've got one that I made, but it's just, it's not very good. And I used a... Um... You know, like the wooden hand clamps, the wooden screw clamps. Uh -huh. They've got like yeah, a reasonable yeah. size, one of those. It just never seems to come out that well. I don't know, I don't know whether it's me or you know, half decent drill bits. And I guess there's loads of factors, but it's you. <laughs> so, I mean, it probably is. Yeah, it probably, probably is. I think, I think part of the problem is I'm quite tight on the blanks as well. So you know when you you, know, you make the blank and you're like, well, it's just not going to be that big at the end, so I'll just I'll make it a little bit smaller. And, uh, you know, well, there's that inch bit left on the end of the blank, and if I cut it that long and try and drill it, then I'm sure that's got something to do with it as well. But Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch, Richard. Just go with that now. No, I mean, when you cut, you know, you cut it in half, don't you? And uh -huh, the, yeah. The tube, and you're like, well, I'll leave a little bit extra from the brass tube, but then you're like, but then it's going to get wasted. So if I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and then it doesn't work. <laughs> I thought that was bad. <laughs> no, I'm pretty tight on stuff like that. <laughs> Good for you, though. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? No, I'm not. I'm not a pen turner. I'd, so barely a turner to be honest i think With i'm the, the only uh, one in the group here who does not use a lid Never that's because you use, that's because you're using the tools for carving i've only used it a couple of times you do have a lid joe yeah. yeah i've got one but I've, I've only used it a couple of times literally i've asked for one for christmas so uh with our fingers crossed i might be a, a, a brand new wood turner in the new year great awesome as it turns out i can't use my new tools on it though thanks jamie <laughs> 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 but, but you can scrape paint off skirting boards. By all accounts, I understand. We could spend an hour yeah. talking about the tools that Alan just got. In case everybody doesn't know, Alan put out a video. Um, when was it? I guess it was on Sunday uh, about a bunch of tools that that you inherited from your um, your great great grandfather. Um, oh, and yeah. those are some quality tools, my friend. You uh, you lucked out. So congratulations on that. Fine. Yeah, it's a, it's a good load. Thank you, and it's a good load of good quality tools. But it's the story behind it that just really blows my hair back just the thought of using my ancestors tools i always thought i have a huge family and nobody in my family is a maker of any kind they have no interest in it they don't watch my watch my channel now and then they'll drop by the shop and say oh look that guy's making stuff and that's it and so to find out there was another woodworker in the family and i got to use his tools is just amazing and i i can't I can't wait to learn to use them. There's some stuff in there. I don't even know what it is. I, I know the name of it, but I don't know how to use it. So I got a, a lot of work ahead of me. The biggest thing or the biggest shame, I know I've, I've got a couple of my grandfather's tools and my biggest regret in having his tools is that he couldn't show me firsthand how he used them. Does that That's make interesting. sense? interesting. No, absolutely. I, mean, I, know how, I know how to yeah. use a hand plane pretty much, but to have him show me how he used his hand plane is just another level. And that's the only 
downside that I can see in that scenario. But that was a cool video, Alan. And thank you. But I found myself in a rabbit hole today because I suddenly had all this man's tools in my hands. But I realized I don't even know what he looks like. I don't know exactly where he's from. It was my grandparents that came here from the UK just after World War II. And these tools are going back way further than that. So immediately I started emailing family members and asking about pictures and names. And I was able to get his name, uh, which was Ross Boyd. Ross Boyd came from uh, the island of uh, Butte. I hope I'm saying that right. It's B-U-T-E in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, and I was able to find that he married uh, an, an, an Irish lady. Uh, that eventually that's where the name Morley came from, like I was telling you, Richard. And, yes. uh, you know, it, it all came from there. But I still can't get my hands on any uh, pictures or anything that he's made. I would love to see the kinds of projects he was making. I bet if you go back and actually you, know, you start digging on this, you'll find stuff that they made. And because you'll they probably put their be able to find pictures. Right? Well, well, not just that, but, you know, there's going to be the stuff that they made. Chances are most of the stuff that they made or a lot of the stuff that they actually made for people is probably still in people's families. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and from that, the, you know, and probably locally. So there might be a connection back to, you know, an old photograph of that old workshop on the island of Butte or, you know, around that area. You just never know what jobs they did. Well, that goes, that kind of goes back to what we started the conversation about. It's like when, when family members make something for another family member, the family member that receives it tends to cherish it, don't they? And yeah. they... And it, and it gets handed down from uh, generation to generation and to generation. So there's another upside to why making things for Christmas is uh, not just the fact that we're all cheap. And we're going to keep telling ourselves that because it makes us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be cutting boards that I made still around in the year 2100. So <laughs> there are be thousands like, and thousands of them by then. Yeah, they'll look like rubbish, but they'll still be there. <laughs> Be like a quarter of an inch thick because it have worn yeah, down yeah. so much. <laughs> Look, it's a plate. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. But apart from um, apart from that, what uh, what else are you working on at the moment, then, Alan? Are you thinking of something to work on with these new tools, or actually, yes, I got playing around with some of the carving tools, and I was thinking about it, and I have a lot of. I, I, I always prop my garage door open a foot or two and you know being here in Canada there's maple leaves everywhere literally everywhere and they blow into the shop all the time I picked one up off the floor and I just kind of started hand drawing it onto a piece of pine just to kind of start playing around with the uh, you know uh, what's it called when you edge around it your starting line when you're uh, wood carving. We'll call it your starting line. I just I just started edging around the leaf after I drew it out and I'm going to just kind of try to carved down around the leaf so the, the leaf itself is raised up off the wood if that makes sense oh you're and, doing the yeah that maybe i can i yeah, can you're carve doing a the, uh, the veins in yeah Sorry? that line you were talking about is a scribe and you were you're, you're doing you're doing a, a relief carving basically a relief a relief cut yes yeah. that's what i'm trying to think of so uh, yeah. i've already started getting into it i've been playing with what i thought was those lathe tools i found that i could uh take a lot of material away really smoothly with it really quickly so uh you know i'm learning it pretty Fairly quickly, I would say, for only having them for 24 hours now. It's hard to keep your hands off them, though, I'll tell you that. I'm not even working on anything, and I got one in each hand, and I'm just thinking, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> we want pictures of that, Alan. I want to see Alan walking around the shop aimlessly with tools that he doesn't know what to do with yet. <laughs> anyway, what is this big scraper thing? I don't even have paint in here. I've, I've been currently working on a, a project from, uh, for, my, for, my, for my dear wife. Um, who noticed that we needed we needed little decorations. Chris, could you make one of these here and make another one, maybe a different style over here so that we can just kind of fill in this gap on our mantle for decorating? For, for, and so, yeah, I was like, she, yeah, it, th that'll be another video coming out in the future. It's uh, She asked me to make some rustic uh, Christmas trees. And uh, if, if, if somebody just walks up to you and says, hey, do me a favor, make me a rustic Christmas tree. I don't know how to interpret that. It's like, what is, what the hell is a rustic Christmas tree? Uh, but okay, uh, so I, yeah, I'm giving it my best shot. That'll be, I'll do that as a video just because it's funny. Uh, sometime in the future, but uh, this coming week, tomorrow night, obviously, you know what I'm doing. I, I talked about that already. I'm making the, I'm doing a video that's not serious woodworking. It's for moms and dads that have limited tools, uh, or maybe not a lot of shop experience themselves, but they want to get their kids involved with making a project for Christmas. And so I did a video on that. I made two little decorations that anybody can make if they're four five or six years old so 
Cool. I mean, I tell you what, if you in the future, if you need any more rustic Christmas trees, you want to come down my street in probably, I don't know, about halfway through January. There's loads of them just sitting in people's front gardens. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of, too, guys. Rustic Christmas. You're talking about dead Christmas trees. You want to make a dead Christmas tree? <laughs> and that turned into like a, a real, no, never mind. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I I went a different way, Richard. But thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Jamie, are you, uh, you working on anything at the moment? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, I'm still in the middle of... Uh, gluing up and cutting the, the the pencil pen together. Um, but the reason that I stopped halfway through it is because I've just put out a video today on the uh, the nutty pen. You and, um, I saw it on the thumbnail. I've obviously seen the actual pen, but I haven't got around to, uh, to watching the video, so don't spoil it for me. I'll tell you what, I'll stick my fingers in my ears. You can tell everyone else, and I won't know. Go on. What is it? Um... Well, without putting too much of a finer point on it, I made a pen out of my nuts. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You should probably clarify that. <laughs> I okay, think so. I, I, I think I'll, so. I'll, put it, I'll put it another way. I got some hex nuts and uh, glued Thank some you. pen tubes into it and uh, put turned it into a pen and then polished the nuts nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves my nuts. And I bet the polishing was your favourite part. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what's the, did you use the uh, what's that stuff called? The grit? The the Yorkshire grit. <laughs> Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire, Yorkshire grit. These nuts. Have you got a specific method for polishing them? Have you got like a, a special hand technique or is it just have at it? Yeah. It's the old wax on, wax on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And how much time did it take? Oh, about 20 minutes. God, your girlfriend must like you. That sounds like a while. Yeah. Yeah, he's either really good at it or he's really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I sat Either on my left arm. Right, okay, 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 okay. Joe, <laughs> Joe, save us here. What are you, what, please tell us what you're working on in, in any detail. <laughs> this is too good to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to be the boss here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the adult in the room. Richard. I just, I, I can't reply to that many emails from people. <laughs> right. Okay, breathe. Right. Okay. Deep breath. Well, lower, make it all boring now again. I've, I've literally, I'm planning on releasing a review next, so there's nothing special about that. But I've, um, I made a LED. What, the actual tool that you're reviewing, or just generally? <laughs> no, just the, the fact to go from what we were just talking about to, I'm doing a tool review. It's like, yeah, but no, I'm going to be reviewing um, the router that I brought like two years ago now, and I never got round to doing a review for it, so it's a bit overdue. But yeah, so that'll be my next video. But project-wise, um, I, I released the Marilyn Monroe box this week, just gone. That was one of the gifts I was sending to America, which I've had done for a while, but I had to wait for them to receive it. Well, another one of the gifts is a LED acrylic light. Well, that, that's obviously been received as well, so I can talk about it, but that will be my next project video. And then similar to the um, line that Chris is going down, I'm going to be making a, a Christmas decoration that's perhaps not suitable for young kids to get involved with the the construction of it, but the after decorating, painting and stuff like that, I think it'll be a good one to get the kids involved with. So I hope that that'll be um, popular. Awesome. Good for you, Joe. That's really good. So presumably that's why you were snowed under basically editing all of last week when we when we talked last time. Yeah, because I've got like three videos going yet. So you'll be sitting pretty just before Christmas, won't you? Be able to batch out loads of Christmas presents you won't have, and you know you got all these videos stacked up, ready to go. No excuses now. I oh, know. I don't. I don't know about that. No, got to think of them first. Well, I, I tell you, I've I've had the the project from Satan this week. My my other half asked me to make her some matching, um, like cupboard, cabinet, drawer, videos, TV stand things to go either side of the chimney breast in her living room and it's just one thing after another after another and i'll tell you what chris i, I saw i've actually watched 
your last video, Chris. Cut it out, you, cut it out. Oops. <laughs> You're yeah, seriously. Um, and if you think you had a bad day, I've had that all week. We went to get materials and the the saw cutting or the materials cutting facility at the branch was down literally just as we arrived the saw broke so we had to go to another branch and they didn't have the right materials i wanted quarter sawn veneered boards and the saw broke where they had it so i went to the other branch and they only had crown cut and then i needed some solid oak and the guy that i rang up to say and he got it yeah, I got it. He didn't have it in the right sizes, no, and it was. I, just, feel, and, I feel for you. Trust me, I know the kind of thing you're talking about. Then, or the, no, this this has gone on all week, not just a day, but the whole week. So, in the end, we went, we opted for the crown cut, and we got the materials, you know, cut to size for us to get a head start on it. And then my other half decided she wanted sliding doors on the front of these cupboards, not opening doors, which meant that the cupboards needed to be deeper overall to allow for the doors that kind of slide past each other you need right. like an extra two inches on the front so all the materials that i had cut were now too shallow oh geez. so the edge banding that i had to put on then had to be much thicker and then i didn't have enough depth in the material for the tops and then then i finally got the stuff for the sliding doors and it said route a seven mil gap groove to run this like extrusion in for level uh -huh. like wheelie slidey wheelie things and i did a seven mil gap and it was too tight and tried to put the the extrusion thing in it had like this locking thing on the side like a little lug so when you pushed it in it just tore and it was just like <laughs> hulk mad <laughs> every step and, um, richard I richard just... you're, de you're depressing the heck out of me i'd rather talk about jamie's panic <laughs> jamie what, what let's talk about your pen some more <laughs> yeah no worries <laughs> I said, well, if you think that pen's nuts I, i've been going absolutely nuts this week but um has anyone apart from obviously you know the videos that we've talked about our own stuff has anyone seen anyone else's really cool cool videos this week I'll give a quick shout out to one that I saw that because I want to see the full length version of it. I don't know if you guys check this out or not. Um, Tristan Timber put out a couple videos this weekend. That they're both awesome because he's, he's a great cinematographer. Uh, but he put out a little teaser. Tristan did a uh, making a birch bark canoe with Tim Byers. And it's like a two minute and 30 second tease video about how Tim Byers goes about making handmade birch bark canoes the way the native americans used to make them and uh it's just uh, i'm fascinated by that process so yeah uh trust in timber if you haven't checked out that video yet give it a look it's called making a birch bark canoe with tim byers uh, awesome video and i want to see like the half hour version of that real soon awesome i saw a, a thumbnail in my feed and it was something like or it might have been a post on facebook um in one of the groups where they said it's ready to flip upside down and float i don't know if that was the same thing it seems like a bit of a mad coincidence if it was um it may be i don't know i, di I didn't see the post if i did see the same post that you saw then i could relate but i, I don't know but it's just awesome i mean I, I that handcrafting of those kind of things to make it watertight to where it actually floats is just that's impressive i just think that's very cool and this and tim Byers does it for a living so um yeah if, if you have a chance check out that video because it's definitely intriguing cool Anyone else got some cool yeah, shout outs? Or, uh, I saw a video um, today actually from a Cactus Workshop and he uh, he quite literally tuned up his bandsaw and played Deep Purple's Smoke on the Water on it. Uh, <laughs> so, what, yeah. Literally and, uh, played it. He, he quite literally played Smoke on the Water on his bandsaw. So uh, since I was brought up with Deep Purple amongst other bands, I thought I'd uh, give that one a shout out. That since I can't even comprehend how you would play anything that's got more than one note in it on a band saw. I just oh, I've got I to go and see that now. I'm not sure how he done it, but it was it was it was good. Cactus that's Workshop has really a real a real way of making the impossible possible. I suppose it would be like a diddly bow. Where do you get these words from? <laughs> <laughs> I just what assumed it was an language? English thing. What language are you speaking? I thought we were... <laughs> I've got to back him up there on all the diddly bowies, so he hasn't made it up. <laughs> oh, one string yeah, but we all know you're inside your head's mad anyway, Joe. <laughs> well, I guess I've been on the podcast too long with Joe then. <laughs> Joe, help us out. What are you watching? Well, um, it's going back to the pen again. I've watched uh, the one and only Easy Swan. 
he's released a video where he's made a, a pen box, like for a gift box for giving a pen as a Christmas gift. But he's gone the step further and he's incorporated a mechanism that when you open the lid of the box, it actually raises the pen forward and displays it to you. And it, it's when he actually breaks it down and builds it and you see the mechanism, it's that simple. But until you see it, it's one of those where I would have never thought of it. So it, it's, I think it can be incorporated into a lot of different projects as well. So it's well worth checking out. Is this one YouTube? Awesome. He's always making crazy cool stuff. I watched, uh, I know we've done him before, but I'm doing it again because I love the man, Daniel Seluige. Um, it's really slipping my mind where he's from, but yeah, he made a congrats video, a 10 K congrats video for James Wright over at Woodbine Wright. Uh, he hand carved his head and I, the project itself was really cool, but the video was really funny and unique. And also, I was in it, and I wasn't expecting it, and it just really blew me away and really made me laugh hard. So, isn't he from? Be Argentina? sure to go check him out. He's from Argentina. Argentina. Yes, yeah, Argentina. thank you. Yes, yeah, very cool. Awesome, awesome. He is a fantastic hand tool woodworker. You be getting some hints from him, man, with all your new hand tools. Him and James are like my hand tool guys. I watch them both very, very closely. <laughs> do Do you watch um, Do you watch Peter Sellers? Not Peter Sellers. Paul Sellers. Do you watch Paul Sellers? Are his videos typically like a half an hour long? Yeah. <laughs> Not taking a shot at him, but uh, I have a few times in the past, and I was definitely learning from him. But I was also, I don't even want to say it. I was definitely falling asleep. They They're kind of. I mean. It, <laughs> He and he's been, a gasp goes across the world. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I, hope he's, I, I so hope he's not listening right now. Nothing against him. And it's just too long for me. That is the sound of Alan being outcast from the community now. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I mean, like Paul's been a hand tool guy for I think sixty years or something crazy like that. A long, long since he was a kid. Um, but wow. if you if you have if you have his videos on in the background whilst you're doing something you can still learn from him it's not a you have to watch what he's doing you can also just listen to what he's to soak it up as well that's um, length enough i could do it like a podcast yeah that's a great idea um it's another way and then when you're like oh what's, what's he talking about then you like can they, 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 you're missing a trick if you're not watching his his stuff in, in hand tool kind of i i, I think i'll try definitely. i think he, he just made it into the footnotes because that's that's really cool that's a good idea i think i'll do that and I um, did anyone see Peter Brown's snowflake video? That he yes, did? yes. I thought that was pretty yeah, cool. That was a spectroply, yeah, yeah. If, um, I mean, that, that, I wasn't going to do a, a YouTube shout out, but it just pinged in my um, my head with the Christmas and the decorations and the making stuff, and you know, Peter Brown making that. Um, but my shout out this week is actually I'm going to go against the grain, and I know some people are going to hate this, but bear with um i'm going to do a shout out to my good friends over at trend routing technologies i've worked with them and i've used their stuff for donkey's years and you know they're not i don't get paid by them or anything like that so don't get me wrong but if you go and check out their website they have got some rather cool routing projects on their website um even if you're anywhere in the world you can kind of go there's like a little box, I think it's in the top right hand corner. You can select your country um, and you can see all the, like these projects and stuff like that. So give them a, a little looky see from, from that point of view. I'll do that. Um, there's, yeah, there's, there's, stuff to, um, there's stuff to learn in, in hidden places. Cool. So where can everyone be found otherwise, if not on this podcast? Chris? Uh, yeah, you can find me in in Connecticut making uh, 28 freaking Christmas presents at the moment. Uh, but no, <laughs> Chris Cute uh, on YouTube, make first cut on Facebook. There you go. What about Alan? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all under the woodworking junkie. Not the real junkie. Jamie? You can find me on YouTube at JP Woodwork and Twitter and Instagram at JP underscore Woodwork. Cool. And Joe? YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Average Joe's Joinery, and Instagram, Average Joe's Photography. Who thinks we should get Chris a Instagram account? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a Twitter. I think, 
and a grinder. Yeah, yeah there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, <Jeff. laughs> <laughs> no, I think that would be cool. Wicked. Okay, well, I've been Rick Morley. You can find me at brainfizz.uk and under my name on YouTube. Thanks for all for listening, and hopefully, you'll join us back here next time on the next episode. So, see you later. Have a great week, everybody. See you next week. Take it easy. Have a week. <laughs>